I don't have to do an intro anymore. There's that sign and this guy right here. You know what we're doing today. Why, can we take it all right now? Another video again. Another video, but this time we're going to actually try to pinpoint the noise that you're having. So I showed in the first couple clips the cowbell sound. Yep. Can you explain again what that is? Yeah, so the cowbell sound can be a, a lot of things. It can be like a differential, it can be an axle. It's basically an engagement sound or potentially hitting against something during engagement. Um, because under engagement or load to be exact, um, it's transferring the, from the uh, engine to the transmission and then through the output shaft, which is right here. But this is actually the flex disc. But behind here is the output shaft. This is your drive shaft. So it takes the load from the transmission all the way to the back of your differential, which spins your wheels back here. Um, in the process of that, there's these areas because the drive shaft's two piece, which is from here to here. You could do a solid piece all the way through, but you're gonna get a lot of vibration and noise. Um, so they always put a flex disc there. I noticed there were two things. When I posted on my Instagram, that a lot of people were saying like, oh, I have that same sound too. I had yeah. like 50 people say that. And then also people were saying, oh, why don't you do a carbon fiber drive shaft? Yeah. So the, drive, the one piece drive shaft would just make a lot of vibration yeah, and noise. Yeah, so a lot of vibration and noise. Um, so BMW made for the new F chassis, uh, carbon fiber drive shaft. It's also better because it's lighter weight. Um, then you have joints here that are going to connect to each other. Have you ever driven a GTR? Mm -hmm. It sounds like marbles. Yep. That's why. Before we get into the rest of it, you were showing me some markings on this from the heat shield. Yeah, so right here on the drive shaft, you can see right here where it's nice and shiny. Yeah. It's supposed to be coated just like this. Um, this is a sign of either two things. One, the heat shield itself being bent and hitting against the drive shaft. There's marking right here. You can see where it's nice and shiny, yeah. clean. Um, so it's hitting here, which is actually exactly where that would be at, because this is actually on the back side. And this would be towards the center, which is where that is. So that's another thing that could cause noise. It could. Okay. Yeah, so we don't know if this is bent or if this is giving out, allowing it to come down under load. And that's the CV joint, right? Uh, the carrier bearing. Carrier bearing, okay. Yeah, that could be actually pushing it down, allowing it to hit this. You can actually feel this too, actually. And it, Oh, there's ridges to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like right here, you feel like it's, you know, powder it's all smooth, and yeah. then there's a bunch of ridges right there. So this is probably an issue here with all the noise that you're getting, okay. emitting. So I think this is failing, allowing this to move too much up and down. Okay. And so, then we're also going to replace the flex disc, right, yeah. or the so Guivo. Remove this. This right here. You can see it's all cracking. It doesn't look horrible, but you know, under load it might start to flex, and you'll see it or like a uh, separation in it. Okay. But we're already here. Might as well replace it. And we have both those parts that are new. Mm -hmm. What what uh, brand are they? Uh, Phoebe. So these are the companies that make it for BMW from factory. They're cheap. Um, it's the same thing. You can buy OEM, but it's up to you to be honest with you. Okay. But it's it's the same thing. So here's the carrier bearing. And all that inside is all brand new, and on my car it's cracking, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, once I, you know, try to apply load to this, you'll see once we put it on the car. We should see a difference in that, as well as the bearing itself. So once we remove this, we'll spin this around like this. I remember last time we spun that one, we felt a lot of, you know, binding inside the bearing. Yeah. Okay. You can hear that sound. It sounds like there's sand in there or something. Yeah, that's a worn bearing. Okay. See? 
So this is supposed to allow it to dampen um, any noise. I mean, imagine this is me just spinning at this speed, right? Now yeah. Imagine this spinning at like, you know, three, 4,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. So RPM is rotation per minute. <laughs> so imagine, you know, 3,000 RPM per minute. You're me spinning it. It's definitely going to be audible then. Yeah. It wasn't smooth. It sounded like smooth. sand. Yeah, exactly. So kind of like how I explained it to you, right? It's kind of like, you know, wheel bearings for your skateboard. Once it starts to wear down, you start to hear that grinding sound. Whereas like it's brand new, it's nice and quiet. Can you show us the play right now in the drive shaft? Yeah. Cause that's the, essentially the noise that I'm hearing. Yeah, so once I drop these two, we'll spin this around, I'll show you. Okay. Um, but even like right here, this is just my weight on here. Is it supposed to move that much? It shouldn't move this much. And you hear the noise? Oh. That's 100% it. Yeah, so if you go percent. upwards, which is not where it's gonna go, because the load's gonna pull this down. Yeah. So you're gonna get downwards noise as well as play. Upwards, nothing. Yeah, the downward sound is the one I hear every day. Yeah. Okay. So separation probably in here on the bottom. This is probably wearing down and getting really weak down here. You can see it actually, it's pretty close to it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the top has a lot of room. Over here is like barely any room. All right, well, so, yeah, if we can move those bolts, let's check it out. Yeah, so that could explain why this is hitting against the heat shield because this is going down too low. So there's too much play going low yeah, and it hits the, the Yeah, so when it goes okay. down, it hits it. So there's potential you could hear multiple noises. Mm -hmm. So this could also be your grinding noise that you're hearing too. <laughs> oh, dude, that's it then. Yeah. <laughs> you are a guru, bro. Well, I was telling Mike that I haven't told him the video yet that I was hearing like a grinding noise on D cell yeah. and it could have been the heat shield. Yep. It probably is. It probably is because all And that's what it. that is. Okay. I mean, you can see how new it is. Everything else is dusty and dirty, you know? Yeah. This is like nice and shiny, polished. You got some back here too, so not as bad as up here. Is there anything back here you recommend replacing? Like at 150,000 miles or anything like that? So you could replace this, but. This doesn't take too much load. What is that? Um, so this is the actual CV joint people are talking about. Okay. I've never seen this fail or get worn down. Oh, really? It's always right here. On these cars, I, I rarely ever replace these. They don't ever go bad. So this is just kind of for the video? No, it's kind of like we're already there. We're taking it off. Might as well just change it. You know, this is not a very expensive piece. And the last thing too, to replace a Guibo or a flex plate, what are the tail signs that say you have to replace it? It's uh, the noise that you're hearing as well as um, over time, once you start driving it more, I mean, it's hard to tell if you bought the car secondhand. So if you bought the car brand new, you'll notice the difference of vibration as well as noise emitting through like the wheels and all that. It's gonna have a metallic sound, kind of like bearings like I was telling you, um, as well as just, you know, play in that cowbell sound. Right What's here. the point of the Guibo? This one right here is gonna transfer it from here to here. Um, with engagement, that's gonna transfer the transmission to this. This is designed to dampen that sound. So, so it dampens the sound and vibration? And vibration. So this can also emit and cause this to wear down and get damaged too. So do you think if someone has a vibration issue or a noise issue that this could be one of the things it that- It could be. So you wouldn't know, like the thing with this is I'm not telling you guys like, hey, this is your issue. Yeah. This could be it. You know, this is where you want to inspect and then determine, just don't throw parts at it. You okay. Know? Just- Well, you tell me that. Issues. I'm always like, let's do it. Yeah, and you're like, no, 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 exactly. let's diagnose it first. Always. Okay. You know, diagnose a problem and then we replace it accordingly. Okay. Learn it out right now. <laughs> <laughs> so my R8 isn't in the best condition, or wasn't. I'm actually getting it repainted by one of my buddies over at ES Collision, and I'm doing a special color. So I think by the time this video is up, my car should be done. And I'm hoping that we can see your car on my channel too. Yes. Eventually. No, it will be. I'm not gonna show it on the, on the camera, but it looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> trying to leak I'll it. give you guys a hint, it's a BMW <laughs> color. That's gonna be <laughs> So I'll explain to you guys how to remove this. So for this carrier bearing and the drive shaft to be exact, um, there are two 13 millimeter bolts, one here, one here. Once you take these two off, this will hang. And then after that, we'll go over here. There's six bolts in total. It's held on with a bolt on one end and the other side of the nut. These are held on with 18 millimeter nuts and bolts. Um, I remove the ones that's on the drive shaft first. Don't remove the one that's on the actual transmission. We'll leave the flex disc on here. Um, and then once we remove the drive shaft, then we'll remove this. We'll have more room. We can actually remove the bolts that hold the transmission up. There's four of them, 13 millimeters as well. So over here, over here, right here and here. And then once we remove all four of those, we'll let this hang down and then we can pivot the drive shaft out of the way and then remove the flex disc afterwards.
Let me drop the e-brake. Does that make a difference? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need to rotate it. Oh, so the e-brake's on, you can't do it. Yeah. Okay. Because I can disengage the transmission. Manually right here. Let's try to spin it. Yeah, the e-brake's on. Oh. So when you actually push this up right here, this is the gear selector. Uh -huh. If you actually push this up, it'll allow you to go into neutral and spin the transmission. Whoa. That way you can access the bolts right here. Um, that way you can actually spin it and put a wrench down on the bottom to hold the other end of it. Because if not, it's going to be a mission to get the ones right, like right here. This one's hard. Yeah, that's way back there. Brandon glasses are dope. I can only see cool people, but I don't see anybody here yet. <laughs> so as you guys can see here, remember I was telling you that it's the same part? Yep. So it's literally the exact same thing. The stamp, part number, every single stamp is on here. Yeah. It's the same thing, except BMW's logo. That's the only difference. The same thing with this. Same stamp, everything. So they make it for BMW, but BMW just relabels it as their own parts. So this is the actual drive shaft off the car. Mm -hmm. And then... Well, this would be considered the half shaft. So this is on the front end of it. Um, it's held on with the uh, one bolt right here, and it just slides right out. It's super easy. It's an 18 millimeter. And then this, obviously, uh, 18s as well. So what I'm doing here is it's actually a sleeve that goes over this, and then there's a bearing inside of it. We can pull this out, but I'm just gonna burn it. Okay. So, make it easier. So heating it up can help get it out. Yeah, so we're gonna heat it up, burn off this rubber right here that holds this piece to here. Once we get this off, we can heat up the bearing sleeve on the inside. That should increase the diameter of the actual metal because it's gonna expand with heat. Once we expand that, then we'll be able to actually go ahead and just pull it all off completely. So, take off that, and yeah, just gonna burn it off. What's the alternative way to get this off? Pressing it, but it's, it's very annoying pressing it off. So it's just really time consuming to get it out? Yeah, because you gotta be able to get underneath it uh -huh. and then press this outwards. The problem with that is you have to have something that clamps inside of here. So it's just easier just to burn this thing off, get this off completely, and then you have access to the bearing itself. Disclaimer for the video, be very careful. Extremely. Do it outdoors. Yeah, outdoors for sure. That was easy. Now I gotta burn this one off, and then I can actually access the one behind it. off the boot now with a flat head knocking it down just so we have a uh, access to the bearing itself plus be able to explain it to you guys so now we got the boot out There's the bearing. <laughs> 
You ever want to fill it? No. <laughs> so doing a different carrier bearing, that's going to help eliminate that. Yeah, so up and down play. So moving around, you know? Yeah. Instead of using a press, again, like I said, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a socket on here. The socket is actually a 36 millimeter, and we get a longer bolt. Same thread pitch as the one that came off of it. That bolts the two together. Now, we're actually going to be tightening this down, and when we tighten this, it's going to push this down. The bearing is going to get pushed down to here. This and this is just to demonstrate it, right? Yeah, okay. for anybody who's doing it from home. So what we'll do is, now, don't shoot these on. Always do it by hand. I'm just gonna shoot it on until it gets all the way down. Just going to tighten this down with the bolt that's here. A little bit longer than the original bolt that was on here with the 36 millimeter socket. And as we're tightening this down, you're gonna see this uh, bearing actually get pushed down. Can you see the gap right here? And we're maxed out. So what are you demonstrating here exactly? This is for anybody who wants to install it from home without a shop press. This is actually better too. What's a shop press? Uh, so a shop press is basically a you know two, three ton hydraulic press that just pushes down with the hydraulic press downwards. Hey Mark, um, you can put a, a different attachments on here to push it down or just do this. It's way easier. It doesn't require that much force to get on. These are CNC perfectly to fit over the drive shaft itself. Now I'm gonna get this off and then you'll be able to see the actual bearing pushed all the way down. So this is more for like DIY at home. Just demonstrating for you guys. Um, I would do the same way that I did today at the shop anyways because it's just safer on the splines and threads and whatnot. We're not damaging anything, you're not scratching anything. And same with burning off with the fire. That's okay to do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually better to do that. So as you can see, it's fully installed. So we got it all the way down to the sleeve right here. Um, let me get a pocket screwdriver real quick while you just hold the light and maybe just show this area. Um, so this is the ring for the bearing here. And that lip on the inside of here, that's actually where you want it to match up together. So, now it's fully pressed down. And then now, we can spin this. There's no crunchy sound. None. Here, yeah. I'll have you spin it so you feel it. Oh, it's way better. Way you can, better, You right? can feel there's no traction anywhere. Or friction. Let me uh, get the IG pick. Got it. Cool. So now we're in saw. And action. All right, so earlier I was explaining about the output shaft of the transmission, which is right here. So, it's simple. Input shaft is where it connects to the engine itself on the backside. Output shaft is where it outputs to the back of the car. So this right here is actually a flange. Sometimes these seals on here go bad, but it's very, very rare. The seal is actually right behind here, you can see it. This brown one right here. Mm -hmm. So that, that normally um, never really goes out in this car, but on traditional cars, they do tend to go out. It's held on with just this bolt right, or this nut right here. Shoot this off and you just slide this out. In very simple terms, this is the back of the transmission, right? Uh -huh. Okay. And then that connects to the flex disc. And that's what that piece is. is right here. Why do they call it a guibo? Uh, so that's just the term of it. Okay. And that's the fresh one. Yeah, so it's pronounced jubo, guibo, flex disc, whatever you want to call it, guys. <laughs> I like calling it a guibo. Yeah. I had to do this on my E30 a long time ago. I remember. Oh, yeah. Was. Very common on those. Yeah. E30. 36 always breaks. Yeah, my E30 had it really bad. Yeah, on those it separates. This is literally just polyurethane with like wires inside of it. Oh. Just <laughs> to kind of keep it in one piece. But these don't ever really go out. Action. So now there's a spline that goes here. It goes to the rear half shaft of the uh, drive shaft itself. Um, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna slide it on. Like so. And then, Ozan, can you hold this for me? And then what we're gonna do is Get a rubber mallet. And then we're just going to tap it on right there. Oops. Also, you hear that tingling sound? That's all the We have the bolt. It is right here. It's 18 millimeter. Mark, can you close the gate? Close the gate? Yeah, close it. So that's the main bolt that connects that part of the drive shaft? It's more of a retainer bolt okay. than anything. It's not like it's gonna take any load or anything. It just keeps the two connected together at all times. So it doesn't have to be that tight. Because the splines inside of there actually holds it from spinning left and right. Um, and then this is never really gonna you know, separate itself on its own. Once we actually <laughs> get it back on, yeah. I'll put my weight back on it, and then we'll see how. Okay. Uh, you break on? Nope. You hear it? 
Nice and smooth. Nice and quiet. That's 10 times better. <laughs> Henry, these are held on with uh, 13 millimeter nuts. And there's four of them? Uh, two, two on the top. Two on the top and then four 13 millimeter bolts on the bottom. Two for the uh, carrier bearing and four for the mount. And then always do these by hand first before you tighten them. Now you got these. Here. And turn with these. Done. That's it. You ready for the test? Yeah, let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even move it at all now. You can move it, but it's like my whole freaking weight on it. Yeah. So now there's much less play, much more rigid. So we're good. Fixed. up a set of sliders from my friend Marco and this is his car. I'll put his Instagram right here. There's a twin to mine. I used to have the EC7s. He's running a 275 Nanking tire which I like those. I want to try them but pretty much identical to mine. It's crazy to see and that he, he has a GTS wing like I do. Yellow cage, GT4 front lip. He said that Django was his inspiration for this build which Django is my inspiration too. Really cool build, man. So it's been quite the day, I'm not gonna lie. I have barely any battery left. Uh, I came over here to Irvine again, down the street by my house, and I just went for like an hour and a half drive. Left side of my face is sunburned. I have my windows open now. Uh, let me explain something really quick about my exhaust, and then uh, I'll show you some B-roll of the car. So from my perspective now, I am obsessed with this wing. The wing, I think, suits the car so much better having this setup um, with the roll cage and you know the, the wheels and the exhaust and everything. It just looks 10 times better. I also put the Eventury sticker on there because I wanted to. Um, so I had an issue with my exhaust that um, one of the clamps, it just wasn't sealing enough, so we had to fix that. I decided to put the OEM X-Pipe back on uh, temporarily, so it is much, much quieter, and I have like 40 less horsepower, which kind of sucks. But you can see here, the wing is back on. The cowbell sound is completely gone, uh, going first and going in, you know, giving it gas and going into reverse. No more cowbell. Um, there is still like that hesitation. I think that's just DCT, but I'm almost positive that with a tune that it'll have better engagement, which I know that with the Alpine tune, I'm pretty sure that one of the things they list is that it's better first gear engagement and also into reverse. So let's hope a tune fixes it. So I just knocked out two videos today and I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. If you guys can, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.